we have power. Let's see if it works. That's forward. Reverse. I'm using the uh, the 10k pot to adjust the speed. And now it's on and we'll hit the emergency stop. Alright. Let me wire up the box now. Alright, so I've screwed the, the box tight. That's really what I meant by saying let's wire up the box here. Not much to see, obviously. Um, now that all of our connections and our wires work, I'm going to put the cap now on the VFD. Okay. So there's the, uh, there's the completed installation of the VFD, the electric and everything. It's nice, it's clean, it's neat, box, and, uh, and everything works. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the programming of the different parameters. All right, some of the parameters, um, Stan sent me a list of some of the parameters. These are just common parameters that most, most of us would want on our lathe. First one being the starting, sto the starting source. All right, now this is telling the VFD basically how do you want, how is the VFD to be started? Um, and the, uh, the value of that is gonna be terminal strip, okay? <clears throat> These could all be found obviously in this book. Um, I bought my VFD and it didn't come with a manual so I just went online and I printed it out um, just on a printer and it's got every parameter. Very good to have this. Um, but I don't need to, uh, you know, one thing I don't need to do is just go into a lot of detail. I'm just going to try to keep it simple for, you know, for demo purposes and instructional purposes because that's really all you need. Um, you could really rack your brain going through that manual. There's so many different parameters to choose from. So anyway, starting source, terminal strip. The next one is going to be the speed reference. How do we? How, how is the VFD to you know to to accept speed values? And on the VFD, it's got a pad up and down to change the hertz. But we're going to set this to um, a VDC pot, which is our speed control. Parameter 107, line voltage 240. I believe mine was set to that. So, but that's where you could change your you could set your your line voltage. Um, overload. This is for overloading your motor, percentage of the of uh, motor protection. Um, I didn't set that one. I don't think I set that one, but we'll, we'll get into that. Uh, stop method. Th this thing by default comes, I believe it's coast to stop. That might be the, va the, uh, the default, but you could, you could have DC uh, braking, which is where direct current gets applied to the motor, uses the motor's DC current. It generates DC current or something like that to to uh, to help slow it down. Again, I am not, and I repeat, I am not a VFD expert. I don't play one on TV. I don't dream of one or think I'm one. So um, you know, bear with me here. I'm just kind of showing you what I'm doing. I'm not trying to you know teach or preach. Um, so yeah, again, stop method, coast to stop. Um, you know, you can you can really get into crazy things like uh, a braking resistor, which will really you know bring the bring the spindle to a in pretty much an immediate stop. Um, P112 enable reverse rotation, um, which we want that because we want the the VFD to issue a reverse command to run the uh, the motor in reverse. Uh, P21, 13A function, forward and run command. I guess that's enabling the terminal to accept the forward and re uh, reverse command. Same thing with P122, reverse run command. Yeah, yeah, forward run command, reverse run command. Some cool things here. P182, oh, 181, 182, and 184. These are frequencies that you can skip. So, I don't know, let's say at frequency 54, your machine vibrates really bad. You can skip it all together. Um, I'm not doing that. I'm not going into that right now. But again, these are, these are all parameters that are in the book. And you can just basically 
adjust them to you know to suit your needs so oh there's there's a there's another one on here it's your ramp time your acceleration time and deceleration time I'll have to look in the book on that one and we'll see what that one is because it by default when I set it up initially because I'd set this all up already I rough wired it in I set it up I set all the parameters just to make sure I kind of sort of knew what I was speaking to here um, but when I first initially started the motor up it, it, I think it was set to a 30 second ramp up so it's like and you're waiting and waiting so um, So we'll go through some of these basic ones here. I'm not going to go through them all because, like I said, there's so many of them. And you, you go through once. I'll, I'll show you how to set the parameters. It's incredibly easy. Um, and the and, and I will say this about the manual. The manual is really intuitive. You you know you read it and you go, yeah, okay, I know exactly what they're talking about. It, it's not very confusing whatsoever. I really am happy with this lens drive. Lens SM Vector. Good stuff. Yeah, SM Vector drive. From Lens, AC Tech. I don't know what the company is, if it's Lens or if it's AC Tech, but these are great drives. <clears throat> So the first one, P100, source control, and here's your here's the default. It shows your default, and it shows you all the different uh, variations. You you know the different parameter options you can choose, and uh, some notes on them. So let's let's do that right now. Let's set P100 to use the terminal strip, which is going to be value one. So to change any parameter, you simply hit this. Uh, M button looks like enter. It's, it's got like a little enter arrow. You hit it, and here's your parameters. You could cycle up. It goes all the way up to 190 something or, or somewhere around there. But we want parameter 100. You hit enter, and I have mine already set at one. But you could see you could set it to zero, one, two. Let's see. Two would be remote keypad. Three would be network. So we want it set to one which is terminal strip and then you just hit enter that's it that's how you set parameters on this drive pick one set it let's go to speed reference P101 okay I have it set to one um, and one is zero to ten VDC that that's basically your your speed pot so hit that Uh, let's see here. Here we go. Minimum frequency. Actually, I'm I'm not going to go into that one yet. Let me first cover the um, the stop method. No, no, no. Where is it? 104 and 105. Acceleration and deceleration time. So 104. <clears throat> hit enter. That's in seconds right there. So I have my acceleration time set to one second so that thing's gonna ramp up to whatever my whatever the speed pot is set at or whatever your your megahertz your your Hertz is at it will ramp up in one second um, and I guess it, it goes away when you don't do nothing uh, so let's say P5 or P105 is deceleration I set that to three seconds okay hit enter and the reason why I have it set to three seconds is that when you're with the speed pot and you're and you're turning the speed pot down if you're if you had it set to one like I initially had it set to one and you're you're cranking you're at your max Hertz motors cooking and I turn it down you've turned it down too fast um, you've decelerated too fast and you have a lot of inertia going you have a lot of uh, momentum going and the VFD goes into protection mode it protects itself obviously and you get a, a, an error um, so you have to set your your deceleration time to, to slowly decelerate down as you're turning your speed pot down something to be aware of no harm done uh, Stan went into great detail explaining this to me 
Guy knows his stuff about uh, about VFDs, that's for sure. This was kind of a mystery to me. I'm thinking, you know, what's going on here when I turn my speed pot down? So that's that. That's your acceleration and your deceleration times. Now, a lot of people were asking, how, how do you overload the motor? Now, I checked my motor here. Can be overloaded. I can bring this thing up to 120 uh, hertz if I want to. I'm not going to run it at that because my lathe is the is the uh, is the factor here. The side gears can't handle those kind of RPMs. The machine itself is just not able to handle those fast RPMs. I overloaded mine a little bit. I went up to to 80 hertz, um, which will bring the lathe's top speed to around I don't know 1,100 RPMs. I think for short runs, I think that's okay for this South Bend. But you know you're on your own for deciding if you're you know for determining if your motor can handle it and most importantly if your machine can handle it. But I would I would advise you to seriously do some research on that and make sure everything is is you know a okay before you do it. Um, but to do that, that said now to do that, you have a minimum frequency and a maximum frequency, and those are P102 and 103. And for instance, if we went to P103, my maximum frequency is 80 hertz, okay? So that means that when I crank it up, it'll go up to 80 hertz. One thing you have to keep in mind, uh, you have to see parameter 160 and 161, which uh, right here, let's see. Parameter 160 and 161 says uh, speed at maximum signal. So when you have your your speed pot turned all the way up, right? Which I had this. I had my 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 hertz brought all the way up to 80. I threw the speed pot on, and it wasn't making it go up to 80. And I'm thinking, what's going on here? <clears throat> There's a parameter that's again P161 and that's the speed at the maximum signal meaning the ma when you're turned your speed pot to the max what Hertz will it be at and that and and again the default is 60 and you have to set that to whatever your ma you know you want your max uh, Hertz to be at so if I come over here and I go to P161 you could see I have it set at 80 so those have to jive with each other and one, let's see, yeah. Oh, and then P160, P160 is your minimum. And, you know, so when you turn your, your volume, uh, volume pot, when you turn your speed pot down, what do you want your hertz to be at? In fact, I'm going to put mine at, I don't know, I'll put mine at, ten, uh, at 20. I believe 20 is the hertz where this drive will will uh, make the full horsepower of the motor. I don't know for 100% sure, so don't quote me on that. But it's it's something to that effect. You know, you want to set your you don't want to set your uh, your minimum too low because you won't get any kind of torque or any kind of horsepower. So um, let's see how that works. Actually, if I turn this guy on. Now I'm going to turn the speed pot all the way down to the lowest it will go. Yeah, see, it, it, it's max, it stops at 20. And then when I bring it all the way up, I'm all the way up at 80. Okay. Well, there you have it. That's, that's most of the, you know, the common... Uh, things that you'll find in here and again that you know this thing goes up to I'm looking for I'm already seeing parameter 205 Let's see how far this goes up 303 uh, wow 406 407 700 <laughs> there's a lot of parameters on here wow The, that's the highest one I'm seeing right there. Parameter 795. So, goes without saying, you could really go crazy with these things. 
Um, this is just operating a lathe and I think I've covered most of the common features in here. Again, that's how you do it. That's how you set the parameters. It's real easy. That's how you hook it all up. And um, you know, you go through the manual and you see which features you know will work for you. So I'm going to post pictures of all this. I'm going to post um, you know links uh, with all the part numbers and everything that I've gotten. And uh, I hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, this was a great learning experience for me, and it was a lot of fun, obviously. And now I have my new motor um, with the smoothness and the quietness of, uh, of a three-phase motor. The, the drive, I will say this, this particular drive, because it's a, a vector drive, it, it does create like a little high-pitched whizzing sound, um, which is normal. That's, that's the drive doing that. Alright, I want to gauge the RPMs now on here with this little tachometer. The highest speed that this went was 880 RPMs on the fastest speed. So let's see what we got going now. like, I don't know, 1310. That's at the fastest speed. That's not bad. That's that's kind of good in case you need it. Um, will I be running it at this speed all the time? No, because, you know, the gear train really isn't set up for that. Take a listen to the gear train. We'll put the tumbler on, and this is what it's going to sound like. So you could hear they're kind of whizzing along there. Um, just happy minor priest. <laughs> you know the spindle could take this the RPMs, 12, 1300 RPMs. The spindle's fine. I mean it's you know it's it's got oil in the, in the cups and everything. It's just the side gears. You know they uh, they're not really meant to spin that fast. So uh, you know you got to use this with caution if you're going to do it on a south bend. Again, I'm not going to be running it at that speed all the time, and I might even knock the arp, the uh, the hertz down to maybe 70 just to prevent it from going there. Maybe dial it. You know, I could dial it in it basically to to an RPM then. If I... So there you have it: the VFD to the power to the control box. Everything is is nice and organized and clean, neat. So this is this was a lot of fun, great project. I learned a lot, and uh, you know I hope it it helps somebody out there who's you know doing the same thing. So thanks a lot, and we'll see you on the next one.